I'm Lilla Raziel and welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before or welcome back if you have. Um, I still have Anna Grandmother with me um, from the video I did yesterday about the light seeds. I know that most people call them star seeds but I just can't, especially not when I'm in channel um, because I'm just, I, I just say what they want me to say and to me, they, they're calling them light seeds and maybe this is, um, maybe there is more of a difference than star se between star seeds and light seeds, but I'm doing another video because I felt like there's more information to come through. Um, I couldn't really sleep last night. I almost got up <laughs> and made this video then, um, but I was trying so hard to sleep at a normal time, so I just didn't. Um... But yeah, so I've written down a couple of questions, um, and I and I also kind of have a question. Um, you know, just wondering if the the number one four four, the one four four thousand, if there is a hundred and forty four thousand that are galac more galactic souls, even though we're all of the light. You know, to me that it's and probably to them as well, it's a bit like, oh, okay, all right. I've just been shown, like, the source energy. So I feel like there is a difference. The difference is that a star seed is more galactic in that they have incarnated from a life where they were already living in the universe, in a different star system, um, and they have left that body, even if it's temporary in some cases, I'm sure, um, and come down to help. And then there are more light seeds where they've come direct from source energy, so, and they've never left before. I just saw 222, two, two. I was going to say that, as I was doubting, doubting myself, I just saw 222. Two, two. So, um, so yeah, there is a difference. There is a difference, apparently, um, which is probably why I kept saying uh, star seeds and light seeds, and, uh, um, so I feel like the 144 is actually, they're saying repeated twice, so, 144 star seeds, which are more galactic. Um, they're saying yes, which they're more likely to have a life to go back to once they're done here. Um, which I'm saying that because it's meant to give them hope. It's not like um, that they're, they're saying to stick it out because the thing is, it's like, oh, yay, thank God I can just, you know, <laughs> leave this life prematurely and go back to another place where I actually want to be. Well, your soul does want to be here. Um, so yeah, they want you to stick it out. They just want you to have hope so that when the going gets tough, you know, once this is over, once you have stuck it out and it's such a short period of time, like a human life in the present doesn't last that long. So, um, so yeah. And you know, accidents still happen. Um, you could be accidentally taken out and be like, no, I wasn't ready. So, you know, you never know when your time is going to be. And so you just have to stick it out is what they're saying. <laughs> but have hope that when you do leave, you'll be going back to a much better place. And you're going to be really proud of yourself that you did stick it out. Um, so there's the galactic star seeds and then there are the celestial light seeds. Um, so the light seeds come from pure source energy so that they, they're, they're saying un, incorruptible or uncorruptible, like you can't, they're so pure and perfect and uncorrupted by, they're saying the dark forces, you know, um, and that's why they are bringing their light Oh, they're saying the star seeds are also bringing their knowledge. Um, okay. I'm going to start asking some of the questions that I've 
written down. And I've, and as I was writing, I was kind of writing some answers as well. So there's like some of what I channeled, like what I wanted to know, some of, yeah, a bit of everything. <laughs> so um, questions for Anna Grandmother. And 144,000, what is the numerology and the power behind 144? And she said, you already know. <laughs> So um, I am a master numerologist and the 144 has definitely been in the back of my mind. I kind of felt like more things were important in the last video and so I kind of forgot about it. Um, but it keeps sort of coming back to me and niggling at me like I want to know. Um, so 144, if you add it together, it equals 9 and, you know, you've got zeros behind that, but zeros don't mean anything. Um, so the nine represents benevolence, endings, giving of service, humanitarianism, and completion of a cycle. Um, ones represent new beginnings and leadership, and 44, the master number, represents stepping into new plans, a new world, responsibility for ourselves, our emotions, mental, like mental stuff, spiritual, physical, and the planet. Because, I mean, the planet is the, is the physical that we all live in. Um, stepping into a solid future with mastery, acknowledgement, security, direct connection and peace. So that's the 44. Um, so I think that those numbers together make it quite interesting. Um, so 144 plus 144 is 18, which again equals 9. So, yeah, two nines are 18 and then, um... 1 plus 8 equals 9. So I think that's very interesting. Bo both collectives are, are, have that 144144. 4, 1, 4, 4. And then when you bring it together, it still comes down to a 9. Um, so I think that's pretty powerful that it really is. Uh, and it's interesting as well because 8s are quite karmic. And I'm just looking at it. When you do 144... On its own, it comes down to a straight nine. So you've got two straight nines coming in to end a cycle. And then when you add the 144 and 144 together, it's 1-8. So new beginnings, but it's also karmic um, because the eights has that karmic element to it and manifestation. Um, and it is hard work. The eights are hard work, but it, it's worth it. The hard work is always worth it. And you always get to the nine, which is the completion. Um, the completion of the cycle. So I, I find that very interesting because we are trying to end that karmic cycle on earth. And so for it to be new beginnings, karma nine, which is the endings. Um, I find that very interesting and, and quite telling. So I knew the numbers would be interesting. Like if I got into it, they're like, is there another question to ask? I'm like, Oh, just let me have a look. I've just like I'm. I was just drawn to the forty four. I'm like, oh, is someone coming in? No. I was like, is that someone Jesus, like his soul, and coming back to do another life? Except instead of the, because it's perceived that Jesus's life was in the vibration of thirty three, the master healer. Um, and then I kept being drawn to the forty four and Jesus's name in my mind. And so I said, is he coming back? And is that life path going to be a 44? Um, I just said he's already here. And he, he he can't have been born in the last, since 2000. He can't have, he, he's got to be older than that because, um, oh, they said he, you're not going to know who he is. It's not going to be like his last life path where he makes this big splash. He's going to do his work quietly. No one's going to know that it's him. Um, he's here to do his mastery alone, like not, um, it's not going to be this big old coming home of Jesus. It's just that he's here and that should be comforting. Um, it makes sense because 44 is like, okay, that's like the next mastery path. Um, so yeah, the 44, just to reiterate, stepping into new plans and a new world, responsibility for ourselves emotionally mentally spiritually physically and the planet and really the planet does have emotional mental spiritual physical so what we do for ourselves we also do for the earth mother 
Um, stepping into a solid future with mastery, acknowledgement, security, direct connection and peace. So yeah, okay. I was just going to keep going there like, no, no. Do you have another question? And I'm like, okay, apparently I do. <laughs> um, I'm just going to pause it and blow my nose because I'm still detoxing. Okay. Um, was there supposed to be an earth split? Um, so when I first started finding all this stuff about Ascension, I was getting into a lot of Dolores Cannon stuff. And um, I did find that really helpful, but at the same time, to me, it was a bit alarming. And they've just said it's outdated information. So the thing is, um, when that information was channeled, they're saying it wasn't that long ago, but to them, it was some time ago. And for us now, we've changed. We've managed to get things... Oh... They said it's it's all Gaia's plan because this is her planet. You know, we're here by her grace. And her plan, uh, they've just said she didn't think she could do it any other way. Okay, so the plan was to have this earth split so that there would be... Oh, oh that's interesting. Okay, so when she split, it was going to be, the 3D was going to be her daughter. Um, and then she was going to move on to 5D. So the Earth was going to split. But she didn't want to do that because to her, all the humans living on the planet, we are her children. Um, she allows us to be here just like a mother allows her child to be in her womb. So... And she couldn't bear to sacrifice her daughter, like a whole planet. And she couldn't bear to sacrifice all the humans and her daughter who would have to keep, continue, they're saying continue, continue to live in this karma cycle. She couldn't bear to do that. She didn't want to do that. Um, oh, they're like, that's why it's never been done before because that was the plan from her inception that was going to be the plan but she didn't want to do that she changed her mind <laughs> she can do that you know she's her own soul her own being she's got her own journey so that's when the call for help went out and when a planet asks for help you better believe the collective the galactic, the celestials, everything, everyone pays attention and goes, whoa, hang on, it's the planet asking for help. We have to help her because that is countless ages of time of being a planet, of being created. Like, that's a big soul journey. That is huge. And she just didn't want to throw it away. Even though it was like that was the plan, I, I was gonna split off, and that part of me was going to become my, like my daughter, my creation. But she didn't want to create that because that's creating negativity, and she's like, no, I don't want to do that plan anymore. So that's why she called for help, <clears throat> and that's why we all came. And so there's not going to be a split anymore. That was the idea but that's not going to happen anymore. Um, it's not what she wanted. Ow. Oh, gee. My candle's about to go out, and so I've just spilt the wax everywhere. But my candle's working again. I, um, waxed myself. <laughs> Oops. Oh, dear. Anyway, so that's that's not the plan anymore. It was the plan, but it's not anymore. They're saying it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough, and there's and it's not just for Gaia. It, it wasn't just not good enough for her. They're saying it, it wasn't good enough for the collective. So the ripple of energy that it would have set, sent out into the universe to split and create a, a 3D Earth and a 5D Earth, and look, the layers will still be there to an extent, but it's not going to be 
They're saying there's not going to be any division. You'll be able to slip in and out of the realities rather than it being, oh, you have to leave people behind. It's not going to be like that. They're saying that's not the way forward. That's not the way of the future. And the thing is that split happening would have created a ripple out into the universe because it still would have, it would have created a lot of good with the 5D, but then there still would have been that 3D in a more solid, they're saying solid form. And that would have been, they're saying an anchor, it's like an anchor, that's what I'm seeing, like just this sinking. And so it was like, no, that's not good enough anymore. It's not good enough. We can do better than that. So that's why the 144 and the 144, because I feel like it's not just one set of 144. It's actually, oh, so did the galactic 144, yeah, they're just like, yes, I couldn't even finish saying it. So I was going to say to them, did the galactic 144, did those souls start coming in first? And now um, it's the celestial 144 more coming in now. That's interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. So those pure souls, there's, they, okay, so they're saying that there's a bit of an overlap, of course, because... It's, it's like they said in my last video, we didn't want to shock the system of the human beings because if they just all came in at once, 144,000 in, in a quick, short amount of time, it would have raised the vibration and just would have sent everything into chaos because when you go through any kind of bettering yourself, anything, there's always that adjustment period and it's hard. It's really hard because you have to sort through all this old dogma and old beliefs and oh my god like my sinuses are still going um but yeah if, if they had just you know come in really quickly it would not have been good so it's happened gradually um okay so we have slowly built to that they, they just said early Okay, so in the late 60s, the celestial 144 light seeds started to come in. Before that, it was mostly, there were probably a few um, light seeds every now and then, um, just to sort of like, it's kind of like a little test, like, are you ready? Are you ready? Um, and, but before that, it was mostly the galactic star seeds. Um, they're, they're saying depositing information, and you can just do that with your soul. Like, if your soul comes down and your soul has those codes of information you can it that's putting it that's already bringing it down into this reality so and they they just said they they wouldn't have had it before all this information these downloads that came down in souls it made it more made it more tangible they're saying oh my god like my sinuses like i'm burping i'm like what the hell is going on <laughs> um so, so yeah, they're saying that before the 60s, okay, so they're saying late 30s, souls started to come in. So that by the time, because time doesn't exist for them, linear time doesn't exist. Um, because it's perceived that the light seeds and the star seeds were, called into action and because Gaia sent out a call for help when they set off the atomic bombs in World War Two, So I feel like some of them came just during the war and maybe a little bit pre-war, World War Two, And then by the time the bomb went off, they were more and more starting to come in. By the time we got to the 60s, there was like a, a really good number of uh, star seeds coming in and then late 60s is when the light seed they're saying 1969 which I know is the summer of love so that makes sense that's kind of cool you know um so the star seeds had made that possible um bringing in their own light codes and their own um they're even saying genetic codes and galactic codes so those, oh, they're saying it's past life energy, 
but um, they're saying good past life energy. Um, information that needed to be unlocked um, and spread to the collective of humans. Um, so, God, there's so much information. <laughs> My brain's like, ah. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. So the star seeds kind of paved the way and then light, st light seeds started to come in um, and they started to work together. Definitely, definitely. There's always cooperation in the light. And um, so last video said that by 1985, they had that, they hit that 144,000 souls. Oh, they're saying they, I think they've surpassed it a couple of times. Oh, they're saying when, the, when, um, when it started to get really heavy and really dense, um, and even though it shook things up a bit, they had to just like bump up the light, even if it was just, okay, it was probably a lot of miscarriages, but that was just souls bringing down their light. Um, and their mothers made that sacrifice and they knew that they were going to go through this when they came down. <clears throat> wow. They're like, Whoa. and they're emotional about it. Like in a way that is, cause I was like, well, what's this about? And then I just kind of was aware of the energy and that's like very solemn and sad because that is a sacrifice to lose a baby. And they're saying that, that it, it's like it, they came in and did a noble thing because they knew they weren't going to get to stay. Um, it was just to bring down their light. Um, and so they're saying some of them might have even made it to like two years old, but they're saying that there would have been a lot of suffering for these souls because um, <laughs> the, if they made it to like toddler years, um, they were probably very sick um, and it was a real struggle. And... Um, this isn't to say that all kids, you know, all kids who are sick and die young are these souls, but I'm just saying there have been a few periods in history where there's been like a surplus, like a, a, a more um, miscarriages and more suffering of small, small children um, because their souls were just here to bring down that light for a short period of time. And they're saying it to inspire their parents to make changes where there needed to be changes. So they, even though they lived a short period of time, it was their souls coming down here was very important and very noble. And, um, yeah, they just like, they, they just got real sad about it. Like, because it was a real sacrifice for these souls to come into this, like, heavy energy because the time that they the times that they came in I'm definitely feeling drawn towards the 90s um they're saying that the time that they came in was when their healing and their light was really needed and the early noughties um so the early 2000s as well that sort of period of time was like a bit hit and miss <sighs> okay they're saying it's Every time you go into a new decade, like um, the noughties, the tens, the twenties, it's like as we're going into each energy um, and like, so the early nineties, they're saying as you go into each new vibration, there's that adjustment period and there's more of a chance that that energy is going to be volatile um, and that they need these souls to incarnate to just to bump up the energy, even if it um, messes with people a bit, because when you have to sort out your your emotional, mental garbage, whatever it is, um, it, it's hard. <laughs> you know, it, it shakes you up, it makes you angry, it makes you emotional, um, and so that's not always a good thing. But it is necessary. Um, okay. So much. I know there's so much more information. There might have to be a third video because this is just a lot. Um, whew, I don't even know what what to do next. I'm like, I I need to take a break and then and then I'm gonna come and sit back down because I need a coffee and I need to go to the bathroom and I need to blow my nose and like, yeah, I like this is just a lot. I've never had to do this before, but 
I need a break. I'll be back. And I'm back. Um, so I left off talking about the Earth split, and I think I'd pretty much summed that up. Um, my sort of follow-up question to that was, has that uh, has that plan changed, and if so, why? And I pretty much answered the that the plan, yes, has changed. Um, but the why part, I think, is important. And um, it plays into a lot of fear-based stuff surrounding Ascension. And um, a lot of work from the past that I feel, it, yeah, spirit's like it's no longer relevant. Um, so, and that's not to discredit the people who have done work in the past about star seeds and light seeds and um, Ascension and all of that. Plans change is what spirits just said. Plans change. And the thing is they want what's best for the good of all. Every single human being. Even if they're living an incarnation that is more negative and more geared towards hurting people. And spirits said for their own betterment. Um, because we do have to live dark lifetimes where we do horrible things to people. We all have to go through that energy so that we can understand it and integrate it and do better. You know, if there wasn't darkness in the world, we wouldn't know the difference between dark and light. And they're saying, yes, yes, that's the point. <clears throat> the point is what you choose once you know better. And living a life is a lesson in itself, even if you are not a very nice person or you make very questionable or bad decisions. Um, so the why is that Gaia doesn't want to leave any of us behind. That was the plan. That is no longer the plan. Um, and I've only seen one other person talk about this. And when you first start to discover all this information about Ascension, um, there's a lot out there about the splitting of the two planets and that, oh, you know, not everyone can go. Like, I refuse to believe that light and dark bullshit. There's really no other way to say it. Because that is, yeah, they, as spirits just said, that's old dogma. Um, the translation of it and the interpretation of it can be and is often linked to um, end times like the stuff written in the Bible and revelations. And I just refuse to believe that. Um, it went there. Yeah, spirits just said, we're not going that way. That's not how things are happening. And I don't want anyone who is just on their path, discovering all of this to think, Oh, I'm going to, you know, if I ascend and if I make my, my spirit and my body lighter and I start to integrate and understand spiritual teachings and start to live it and start to raise my vibration that I'm then going to have to leave my family behind. It doesn't work like that. Um, they're saying it's, it's much more complicated than that, infinitely more complicated than that. And it's not so much about splitting the world and creating two separate planets for two separate dimensions that's not how it works when you need to see your family you'll see your family when oh wow I just I just looked at it and I wasn't doubting myself but I was like oh this is interesting and it was 28 28 I've never had that one before so I might do some numerology on that later and see what it see what it says I'll just do writing it down otherwise because my brain will forget um but yeah like <clears throat> You can live on the same planet and not be on a split planet and yet still be mostly in 5D. And the thing is that people keep... And there's also a lot of stuff about um, this this event, this big event. Um, and they, they kind of make it seem doom and gloom and like it's going to be cataclysmic and, you know, the whole world's going to change. They're saying, it, yes, yes, the world will change, but they're saying it's going to happen over a long period of time. They're going to, they're saying that there's going to be a, a much longer period of adjustment than what people have previously anticipated in the past. And the thing is, the reason I don't want to discredit anyone said in the past is that... The part, okay, they've just said the past is one timeline. The present that we're in now is a different timeline. Um, t 
timelines change, plans change, and therefore something I say now may not be relevant in two years. They're saying two years. I was going to say ten, but they were like two years because the thing is, or it might just not be relevant for me. It might be relevant for someone else because the thing is everyone is living in their own reality and you can change your reality. So something that applies now might not apply in the future. And I don't think that anything negative applies anymore. I think we've pushed past that. I think there was a there was a period of time where there was a bit of a question whether we will be able to push it far enough and ascend far enough, fast enough, that they're saying it won't be a problem anymore. So there was a question where, oh, you know, guys changed their plan. Can we help her do it? Are we going to be able to achieve this? Well, we already have. Um, that's why it's, it's, they're, they're saying it's not to be worried about. It's not to worry. Don't worry about it. Um, that's not happening anymore. That split and division. It's just they're saying it had to change anyway. Um, okay, they're talking about a long time ago when the plan was originally made that there wasn't, for this planet, there wasn't even, because it was such a heavy, dense planet of duality, there wasn't even a plan for it. They, I don't think that they anticipated that this planet was going to be able to ascend in the way that it is. Um, because of the nature of, of how dense the planet is. Um... And it is happening much faster than what they anticipated because they're talking about the generations and how long it was supposed to take in a different reality. <laughs> this, this information is trippy, but you know, I have to honor have to honor it because like, you know, you can't make this stuff up, basically. Um so I feel that it was supposed to transition um into two separate planets and that there would be a division and that different generations of a family would end up on one side and some on the other. But that is that is no more, they're saying. That is no longer. That's not what's going to happen. Um, so I don't want people just getting into Ascension stuff to take on that stuff as truth because it threw me into a bit of chaos, like, reading or watching stuff that that had that diatribe. I don't believe that. Um, it brought out fear in me because it felt wrong. Um, and it is wrong. It's That's not what's going to happen. And there's only been one other teacher on this stuff. His name's Phil Good. And he's the only one who said, and just recently said that... Um, that's not going to happen. No one will be left behind. That's not what Guy wants. That's why the plan was changed. That's why the star seeds and the light seeds all came down because um, <laughs> I just looked up and it said 33, 33. I'm like, okay. So, it, I mean, she is a master healer. What mother isn't? Anna, the grand grandmother of, and I feel, and this will be in my next questions, that she is a grandmother energy that is universal and in a sense celestial and I feel that she has been the grandmother on other planets of energies similar to Jesus or if not the same soul <laughs> just said 3355 okay yes confirmation yes because there, there is an element of me that's like oh my god like you're mental you're making this up and then I see 3355 and I'm like okay not making it up thank you <laughs> um okay so uh, uh, well um <clears throat> well I was gonna well what was I saying I can't remember what I was saying before all this stuff oh that guy changed her mind yeah that's right um, so yeah, that's why all the star seeds, light seeds and everyone came in to, to change everything. Um, I did have a point 
to that, but I and I was gonna deviate and then get back to it, but I can't remember what it was. So I'm just gonna carry on, and if they remind me and I remember, then so be it. Uh, they're saying yes, we'll bring you back to that. Don't worry. <laughs> um, okay, so I had written down a question, um, Anna, grandmother of us all, and Gaia question mark. Um, so is she is Anna, grandmother, a universal energy, um, and is she? the grandmother of the earth mother and I've written down yes and I was looking at her card before and you can see like ancient civilizations and um, um what did I use last time was it just this let me try this see if this works um so you can see her there And she's, it kind of looks like another world down here that she's watching over. Um, and in the background, there are the ancient civilizations, and then behind that, the earth. Um, and I was looking at it th thinking, oh, I wonder if her energy actually had her own planet, and this split that was going to happen to Gaia, but is no longer. Um, if that is, if Guy, if that happened to Anna, grandmother, but and so Gaia is her daughter or granddaughter, or you know what I'm saying. That that planetary energy, they're saying planetary inheritance. So there is that soul of a planet splitting off and becoming, you know, giving birth to another planet. They're saying, oh, they're saying not all souls can be a planet. They're saying it's a big job. It's a big task. Okay. And then, and they've just said, and once it's over, you never really, you never stop. So it has to be a special soul that, that is a planet. So I feel like, yeah, I, I was just going to say, I feel like the Anna grandmother, grandmother of Jesus was her own planet and, that planet has been destroyed um, or just, you know, all good things come to an end as do all bad things. And um, I feel like even though her incarnation as a planet is over because it's never really over. And the thing is that you do give birth to the next generation of planet or the next energy of that. And I feel that her energy as a grandmother like it and you feel like this magnanimous energy that she is a grandmother of the universe in that she has come into lots of incarnations where she has been the grandmother of jesus or that that kind of higher vibration when a planet has needed to ascend or to begin ascending or to have that experience of a higher vibration so, um, so yeah, I feel that that mothering energy is assisting Gaia in this transformation because she's already lived it. Um, and that she was, she came into an incarnation on the planet, um, to be the mother of Mary. They're like, yes, yes, that's it. Don't doubt, don't doubt yourself. That's it. Um, to be the mother of Mary so that Mary, because when you come down to the planet, the, your soul, how light your soul is, puts that energy into the planet and into the next generation. Um, in the past video, um, and I, I've got it down here as a question, in the past video, Anna, grandmother, gave me the information that it's to, um, not just to bring down the light to, but, and to disperse it in an energetic way, but also to breed in the light into the human race. That is a part of ascension. That is a part of what helps it to happen. Um, <clears throat> so I feel that Anna, grandmother, her soul, which is just of the pure light and carries that vibration of the maternal wise mother, came in to have Mary so that she could carry the light that was Jesus because that wasn't going to happen without she was like the bridge to that happening. Um, 
because without her energy coming down, his wouldn't have been able to come through because it would have been too much, um, too much light for any other soul to have carried if they hadn't have had her as their mother, then grandmother. Um, so, uh, the, what I wrote in this question down here is, um, wanting to know about the comment breed in the light from my last video. And I said, um, was your soul, uh, your soul energy birthing Mary enabled her. So did your soul energy birthing Mary enable her to carry Jesus in a dense patriarchal cycle and time? And, um, yes, was the answer I got before I could even finish, um, thinking it or writing it. So, um, and then all this other information has come through about her being her own planet. Um, and that because, and I think the same will be true for Gaia and her journey is still very long, long lived. Yeah. That's what they're saying. She is very long lived, um, because she has all of this support. And the thing is, um, once you've been a grandmother planet or a grandfather planet, that energy stays and it carries into other incarnations and can, and can be used by the universe because we're all the product of our, our experiences as souls. And a big part of that never goes away. And when you've had the experience of being a planet, I would think that that just, yeah, they're saying it shapes you. And so she will always carry that energy of the grandmother, um, just as Gaia will always carry that energy of the mother. Um, and you know, all things do end. So one day Gaia will move on and she'll be like, okay, I've, you know, lived my life as a planet and, but she will still always be Gaia, the earth mother. Um, she will always carry that vibration and she will go into other incarnations. Um, and they've just said she will seed other planets. Um, Ah, oh, but not in the way you might expect. They said she'll still be here as Gaia, as the planet, um, when other planets are seeded from her. So I know this is really far out stuff. <laughs> if you're still here, like, well done. Um, <laughs> so she will still be around, still be doing her planetary Earth mother thing and um oh that's right so it was another thought that occurred to me because I get so worried about the population levels on this planet um they, they're saying we have far exceeded what we should have on this planet but they're like but it's all part of the divine plan it's fine um it's not to be worried about is what they keep saying um so the seeding of other planets from Gaia, she will seed other planets because she's raised us as a species. Without her, we would not exist. Um, so she will seed other planets because we have the light, um, have come in to seed her planet. And it's still going on now. They're saying it's still going on. Um, <clears throat> it's far more complex and convoluted than we could even fathom um so they're like let's not go into that <laughs> i think that would be too much um but there but she i feel like and because it, it is something that we worry about and if anyone is in fear about this i think it's not helpful and i think that's why i'm allowed to say this um that guy will seed other planets so humans are going to go into the cosmos they're saying and we will seed other planets. We will live on other planets. So the population getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's actually not to be worried about. That's what's meant to happen because we're going to go off and um, seed other planets. So, and, and they're saying that's a long way off, but they're saying you're going to need a lot of people. So it's not to be worried about. Um, if you want kids and it's your d divine calling and you can't, bear to live this life without creating a, a little child and nurturing and teaching and 
showing them what it is to be human and how to live their best life in a human body, um, working with spirit and um, because they're saying the more light you integrate into the next generation, the more light they will integrate into the, into the generation after that. So it is really important that pe if you do feel called to have kids, then they're saying make that happen. And that doesn't have to be, you can still put your light into a child. If a child is raised by a light soul and a light being, your teachings and your energy still get poured into that child. It doesn't have to be your biological child. And they're saying it can just be your nieces and nephews or... Um, now they're, they're saying even the... They're calling them earth children, um, but they showed me animals. So you can do it that way as well. Um, they're saying energy is infinitely convoluted and complicated and... Um, intrinsic and not to doubt how special your connection can be with any other living being. Um, so yeah, it, it is complicated, um, but I mean, it's a beautiful experience to be a human and we've, it's just the tip of the iceberg, you know, we've only just scratched the surface. That's what they're saying. Um, so I'm just going to have a look at my, I've got like two other questions. I think that's all. Um, <clears throat> okay, I already answered that. Is Anna grandmother a mother energy of the universe and represents this energy from many incarnations? So on other planets, she's been that same um, grandmother of a divine light being like Jesus. It doesn't have to be necessarily Jesus, although I wouldn't be surprised if they have had similar lifetimes of Anna and Jesus on other planets. Um, <laughs> Spirit's just like, if you've got the wisdom, you may as well use it. <laughs> um, uh, okay. So I the next question was one incarnation of many. Yes, I was the grandmother of Jesus. So yeah, they, um, I feel like they have done this many times before on other planets. And I mean, we know how big the universe is. There's infinite possibilities for the lifetimes that they could have lived together and um, brought the same blessings and knowledge and seeding of light to other planets. You know, if your soul's good at something, why wouldn't you do it over and over again to, for the good of all is what I'm hearing, for the good of all. Um... Okay. Um, I'm like, is it, in my mind, I'm like, is there anything else? And they're like, um, tell them about the taste of the water. And then they showed me this um, when I was being attuned to Isis Seishin. I think it was the, they're saying it's the first one. Because I was like, I think it was the first one. They're like, yes, yeah, the first one. Um, so I, when I was being attuned, oh, I needed to tell them, okay, all right. So people need protection right now. And in the last video I said about the, um, your opening your wings of divinity and using those to protect you. Uh, and they're saying everyone has wings of divinity, all of you. So don't feel like, oh no, I'm just a star seed. I, I, um, I have a high affinity with Sirius or Pleiades or anywhere, anywhere in the universe. You're not just that. No one is just that. Everyone is also celestial because we all come from the same place. So everyone has wings of divinity. It's like the um, halo, the symbol of God. Well, it's my symbol for God anyway. It doesn't have to be yours. You might channel your own, but this is just mine. So, and to me, it's a halo, but it also channels God's energy. So, so you have the never-ending circle of God's love and protection and support and all of that good stuff. And then the point of creation um, and the source, the creator, God, like um, that place that we all go back to um, and then everything that he's created in between. So we are always protected. So it's a protection symbol. It's a symbol to channel energy. Um, his golden light energy and they're saying it has all the shades of the rainbow including white 
and they're saying even a little bit of black because that's the balance and it's okay okay it's also okay to have the black because a black they're saying it's a spiritual chelator that's interesting so chelation is where you draw out um heavy metals from the body so that so the black is a chelator so if you have it will draw out the negative crap basically um <clears throat> So, um, that is a form of protection, that symbol, the wings, the wings of divinity is a form of protection. And then also they want me to talk about my experience with Isis Seishim when I was attuned. So, um, when I was being attuned, my master teacher, she was attuning me and she thought, oh, I, I wonder what experience she's having right now. So I'm just going to tune in and see what I can, if, if I can see what she's seeing, um, and so she was tuning in and she told me this afterwards and she said, so I was trying, I was having a bit of a sticky beak and I wanted to see what you were experiencing. And she said, all I got was a wall of Egyptian sand. <laughs> so, and as it's Isis Seishim, um, Isis is that light and dark energy and she is a divine mother as well as what I've just heard. So um, the goddess Isis of Egypt, she is light and dark. She is that balance. She can go into the darkness and doesn't fear it. And, um, because she went into the underworld to get her love and bring him back. Um, so she, she can be both light and dark. <laughs> they just said she's not to be fucked with, basically. Um, so, oh God, I love it. Um, so I have found, since my master teacher said that, she... Isis, you can call in the goddess Isis and ask her to shield you with her ancient Egyptian sand. And it, and I mean, my master teacher is very good at what she does. Spirit was just like, nope. And I think it was just a way to transmit this lesson that you can use Egyptian sand to protect your energy, to protect your home, your land, you know, someone that you're looking at who you feel like might be in danger you can just ask for the goddess Isis to go and surround that person with her protection, her Egyptian sand. Um, and yeah, my master teacher, she just said that she tried to have a look and it was like Egyptian sand and she tried to look again, but nope, Egyptian, Egyptian sand, she couldn't see anything. So that is a good protector as well. Um, and it's, it is something that I use quite often. And in fact, I often use it to create sacred space. Um, and to hot, they're saying to hold that sacred space because sand is, it's quite dense. It's like, you know, when I see the sand around me, it's like, um, it's like a column of, like if you were inside the eye of a tornado, <laughs> but the tornado was like pure sand whipping around you. That's how I see it. Um, but you can see it however you like, as long as it's your protection. Um, so what I was seeing when, uh, my master teacher was being shown this sand is I was in a, I think it was a Lemurian temple and the walls were made of pure crystal, like clear quartz crystal, the floor, everything. There was like this big column of a fountain in the middle and I was in this healing bath. I'm pretty sure I was naked, but I didn't care. No one else cared. There were like priests in there and there were other people. It was like a round room. And um, they were dressed in white and they didn't look male or female. They were just um, quite androgynous and they were healing with the crystal and the water. And um, I think I'd asked for some water and someone bought me like a clear quartz drinking vessel and I sit the water and it was sweet. And I was like, oh, I was like, how do you get water like this? Like, this is amazing. This tastes so good. Um, and it was like that pure sweet where it doesn't have no ne like nasty um, parasites or bacteria or chemicals. It was just the purest water you've ever had in your life. And, um, and I said, how do you get water like this? And they were like, and then they spoke these words to me and they said, the new Lasai, and it's just to cleanse and to purify. So I'm just going to write it down. Okay. So up here, 
lanula side that's probably backwards mm. I'll put it in I'll put it in the box um, the description box but yeah it's just to cleanse and to purify they said you can do it to alcohol like if someone is sitting next to you and you're like well they've had too much to drink but if I take their drink away from them they're gonna be pissed off so you might just be like oh can I have a little sip and you know whatever or like just a cheeky sip and just say it in your mind that that's fine um, but yeah it's just it means to cleanse and to purify and it does make things taste better and and actually I use it on my vegetables as well to cleanse and to purify like um, I use organically as I can but sometimes you just can't afford to excuse me you just can't afford um, everything organic um, not yet anyway um, so I use that same cleansing purifying ritual on my vegetables um, they're like yeah no say that I'm like and when I do I see like this it's like this thick film of gunk like dropping off it it's like here I see it here it's not like something you physically see um, but it's every time if I cleanse and purify a fruit or a vegetable or whatever it the water does cleanse it and um yeah it it works I'm like oh, they'll think I'm crazy they're like just say it I'm like ah oh, fine <laughs> so um I feel like we're coming to the end I don't feel like there's much more to say for right now but I'm sure they'll be back I've you know there's more to say just not right now okay they're take they're taking Anna grandmother back now they're like god you could have done this last night and got a full night's sleep <laughs> But I was like, oh, I just want to go to bed. Um, <laughs> though I didn't sleep. Um, so, yeah, I think that's about all for now. God, I'm really, like, detoxing today. That TRS is working. Um, should I pull any cards? They're like, yes, the blue ones. These ones, they're like, yes, that's right. Okay, so these, oh, I think these might be the Lisa Williams ones. I don't keep the books and stuff. I just shuffle them. Okay, can we please have information regarding our work with Anna Grandmother, even though they've taken it back. There's still spirit here. I wanted a number of people. Oh, they always like, they, they've just said Deck with this work. They said uh, Deck, Jesus, Seraphis Bay, Gabriel. They're like, oh, a few others you don't need to know about. You don't need to know that. And the first card that flips out and is looking at me is guide, spirit guide, helping and guiding through life, side, signs from spirit. So basically just guides. Guides are always with me. Um, new birth, vitality, fresh start. Yeah. They're like, no, that's it. Don't shuffle them again. I'm like, okay. So, um, yeah, like this has been very interesting. I can't wait to rewatch the video and, see all the things that I forgot that I've said um so yeah well I have to go to the bathroom and Anna grandmother has gone off to do her seating of the light work and support as a divine grandmother um so I thank her and we send her love and I thank all of my guides without whom this would not be possible and yeah I will see you next time Take three for luck and take care. Bye.